Okay, so welcome everyone to the Asian Center and the Tri College PhD Philippine Studies Program Information Session. And um, I would just like to say that our admissions are ongoing until July 15. And I would like to welcome everyone who are who for with us today. And thank you very much for coming. So our information session is to inform you and to let you know the, the processes of how to apply and what are the requirements for the master's and PhD programs of the Asian Center in the Tri College PhD program. So I hope that you'll have um, a productive afternoon. And um, I would just like to 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 also acknowledge the participants for this afternoon. So as you can see, medyo nag, uh, we, um, we use another mode. We, we usually use we webinar setting, uh, a webinar setting during our webinars. But now we are currently using a meeting setting so that we can interact with you. We can answer and address your questions para mas maging interesado tayo at mas maging desidido tayo na mag-apply sa ating mga master's programs. So now, let me just acknowledge our um, participants. So we actually have around 200 um, registrants. So I'm hoping that the number of participants will increase as we go along this afternoon. So just to mention some of the participants, we have those... Um, we have a lot of participants from universities and colleges in the Philippines. We have participants from the De La Salle University Das Marinas, Tarlac Agricultural University. We have Foundation University in Mandawe City. We have um, from the UP College of Education, we have participants from Aten the Ateneo. Uh, we would also like to appreciate if you can um, chat where, where you um, your institution that you are affili affiliated to. So let me just... Yeah, okay. So we also have participants from the Asian Institute of Technology, Bukidnon State University. Wow, very... Ano pala tayo? National pala tayo. Actually, international. We have participants from the Sasakawa Peace Foundation, Yokohama, Japan. Um, Union Christian College, Palawan State University. We also have participants from the Malabon National High School, Philippine Red Cross. Um, we have participants from national government agencies. Um, we have the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Department of Education, Department of Budget and Management, Department of Foreign Affairs of Education. We have participants from embassies. Uh, yan. And NGOs, Ibon International, Jerry Rojas uh, Foundation. Yeah. So I hope that everyone will have a productive afternoon and I hope that everyone will be informed after this information session. Okay, so let me begin by introducing our college secretary um, to give us the information that we need to apply for our programs. So we have Dr. Maria Dulce F. Natividad. Ma'am Dulce. Uh, maraming salamat, Dene. And uh, thank you to everyone for um, attending this session uh, this afternoon and for your interest in the Asian Center's uh, programs. So let me just begin with uh, what we will cover this afternoon. Uh, next slide, please. So we will cover the history of the Asian Center, our academic programs, how uh, prospective students can navigate their studies, the admissions process, um, the people at AC, uh, particularly our faculty, and uh, what resources and, fa and facilities are available to all our uh, students and faculty. Next, please. So uh, who, who are, um, what is the, who is the Asian Center and what does uh, the Asian Center offer? So the Asian Center is the only college with a regional area of specialization in the University of the Philippines, uh, Diliman Campus. Um, it was originally established in 1955 as the Institute of Asian Studies. 
1968, it was reorganized and formally became the Asian Center through, through RA 5334. It is the only unit in UP Diliman that derives its mandate from a Philippine law. However, from 1973 to 1979, the center was absorbed by the Philippine Center for Advanced Studies, or what we call PICAS. This was during the martial law years, until it was returned to its original status and name in 1979. As a degree-granting institution that performs research functions, the Asian Center's mission is to develop a closer and a broader, con and broader contact with our Asian neighbors in the field of learning and scholarship to attain knowledge of our national identity in relation to other Asian nations through profound studies on Asian cultures, histories, social forces, and aspirations. Now, um, let me go to our uh, academic program. Next slide, please. So the Asian Center offers graduate level multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary academic programs on Asian studies and Philippine studies. Uh, as you will see on the screen, we have uh, four master's programs and one Philippine studies program. Uh, under the Asian Center, we have the Master, Master of Arts in Asian Studies, which is the thesis track, and Master of Asian Studies, which is the non-thesis track. Uh, for the mass, for the Philippine Studies program, we, we also have the same uh, thesis and non-thesis tracks. For the Philippine Studies uh, PhD uh, program, um, this, I will talk about that later, uh, but um, for now, um, for your information, the PhD program is administered by three um, colleges, Asian Center, the College of Arts and Letters, and the College of Social Sciences and Philosophy. Next slide, please. As an overview, as an overview the Asian um, money and area specialists in, area, in Asian studies and Philippine studies. It is important to note that the Asian Center approaches the study of the Philippines by examining it within its broader Asian context, at the same time, we approach the study of Asia from the Philippine vantage point. Thus, students learn to develop a Philippines in Asia perspective and a comparativist approach to Asian and Philippine studies. So as you can see here, our Asian studies program um, takes an area studies approach. Uh, it's informed um, uh, by political, economic, cultural, and social discourses. And we look at cont contemporary Asian states, cultures, and societies from a Philippine perspective. Um, these are the areas of specialization under the Asians, under Asian studies. Um, we have four regional specializations, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and West Asia. But note that for Northeast Asia, we, we also have country-specific uh, um, specialization. So we have China, Korea, and Japan. In terms of the number of units that the students have to finish for the thesis track students, um, they have to finish 33 course uh, units. Uh, for non-thesis, it's 39 units, except for Southeast Asia, there's a little bit more and students have to uh, finish 42 units. Next slide. Uh, for the Philippine Studies Program, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we study the Philippines, uh, uh, taking the perspective of Philippines in Asia. And it looks at Filipino society and culture and its constituent ethno ethno-linguistic groups and the distinct identity of Filipinos. Like the Asian Studies Program, the Philippine Studies Program has areas of specialization namely development studies, foreign relations, and society and culture. For those who are interested in the thesis track, um, students have to finish uh, 33 units of coursework. And for non-thesis, uh, 39 units of coursework. Um, and uh, 
Yes. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Okay, so this is how uh, we navigate um, the programs uh, in the Asian Center. The main office that implements uh, academic programs and academic policies is the office of the college secretary. And uh, we have uh, two staff, uh, that's Robert Silieza and Abel Colondrina. And these are also the people that you will encounter when you uh, apply for, um, for the programs. Um, so next. Okay, so this is the general flow um, of, um, of the entire program. So you, uh, students have to take and finish the coursework, and that will usually take about two to three years. And uh, after which, um, they, they also have to um, um, take, um, finish, a language proficiency uh, course or uh, exam. They also have to take a comprehensive exam. For those who are in the non-thesis track, um, after the comprehensive exam, that's the time that they will graduate. Note that all students are given five years to finish their degree, but uh, are allowed to have a maximum of five years uh, extension. Um, next slide. So after the coursework, language, uh, comprehensive exam requirements, those who are in the thesis uh, track have to continue and defend their proposal, undertake their research and writing, and then go on to defend their thesis, after which that's the time that they will graduate. So it's a, lit, it's a bit longer for those who are in the thesis track. So that's the general flow of the master's degree. Next, please. So for the Asian studies, the core courses are Asian in, Asia in antiquity. Let me just I can see the entire slide. There are four core courses, Asia in Antiquity, Modern Asia, Theories and Perspectives on Area Studies, and Research Methods. And then after the core courses, students also have to take specialization and elective courses. Next slide. These are just um, um, a list, uh, a short list of sample courses that you can take under our Asian Studies program. So you have uh, Arts of Asia, Philosophies and Religions of Asia, Security Issues in the Asia Pacific, um, Regionalism and Community Building in Asia, and then you have East-West Encounter and Industrialization and Urban Development in Asia. So these are specialization courses, but for um, all Asian studies majors have to take um, specialization courses in the domains of um, development, so, uh, so, social and economic development, politics and governance, and society and culture. So th these are required courses for Asian studies majors. Next. Now for the Philippine Studies uh, program, these are the core courses, Philippines in Asia and the Pacific, Theories and Perspectives in Philippine Studies. PS219 is supposed to be a seminar on society and culture. And then you also have a PS299, which is the research presentation courses, artistic impression. Artistic expressions, that's supposed to be artistic expressions. Uh, Philippine institutions and social movements, um, history and development of Philippine foreign relations and others. Okay. Next slide. And um, in terms of the language proficiency, those in the Philippine studies program 
uh, can take either a Philippine language or any Asian uh, language. They can also take Spanish as a substitute since most of our archival uh, resources are uh, written in Spanish. So Spanish is uh, acceptable uh, for Philippine studies uh, majors. In terms of um, Asian studies, um, the language requirements uh, have to be relevant to the specialization. Um, and so you can take Thai, Bahasa, um, Nihongo, and others. And it has to be uh, two levels of language courses. Uh, if you've already taken uh, or completed or, or have enough proficiency in, in a relevant uh, language, you can submit a proficiency uh, certificate uh, or take a, a proficiency exam. Mm -hmm. For the comprehensive exams, uh, I think um, uh, obviously it will cover core courses, theories and methods, and area, area of specialization courses. This, uh, this is taken after the coursework and language proficiency requirements. And again, for non thesis, once you've gone through all from one to uh, stages, uh, phases one to steps one, two, and three. Um, your last step is to graduate. Next slide. And then um, again, for those in the thesis track, you have to take uh, steps five, six, seven before you graduate. Okay, let's go to the next. So we go to the admissions process. Next slide. These are the requirements for application. Uh, you have to submit an online application form. And this is uh, found in the website of the Asian Center. You have to submit a letter of application addressed to the Dean of the Asian Center, uh, Dr. Henelito Sevilla Jr. Uh, a CV, and for non-thesis, you have to submit an essay on one issue in Asia or the Philippines, depending on the program that you're applying for. For those in the thesis track, uh, you have to submit a research plan. This is, this is not, uh, you are not expected to uh, submit uh, 20 pages, you know, a maximum of five pages, uh, would suffice as long as you know the most important uh, parts of your research plan um, are covered. And then we, we also ask for recommendations. Uh, you can submit two to three recommendation letters. And then um, we also ask for transcript of records. And um, once you, you've been evaluated as um, Passing the first screening, uh, applicants will be called for um, an interview. And the interview will be, um, will be conducted by a panel of uh, faculty members from the Asian Center. Um, applicants also have to take an aptitude exam, which is given by our uh, Office of uh, um, student guidance and uh, submit a passport, passport size photos, uh, birth certificate, and uh, for those who are married, uh, a marriage certificate. And then um, there is also an application fee for um, nationals, it's 100, and for international students, it's $25. Next slide. For uh, there are additional requirements uh, for uh, international student applicants. You have to submit a valid passport, a copy of your valid passport, uh, and um, original or uh, um, copy of your certified true copy of uh, standard language tests uh, showing a minimum score. Next. And for graduates of um, 
non UP yeah, non UPD means uh, UPD liman. Um, so you, you have to submit a cert certificate of transfer credentials and a computation of uh, your um, GWA or weighted average. Um, so we, we ask for this because we have uh, different uh, grading systems. So it has to be, to be computed um, in accordance to uh, UP, uh, the UP grading system. Next. So this is now the, the flow of the process. So you fill out the application form and submit the application form together with all the other requirements uh, to the Office of the College Secretary. Then take the aptitude exam, um, write uh, an essay or a, a research proposal. And then after which, uh, you get interviewed. And uh, depending on the result of the interviews and the exams, um, you will be um, informed if you're accepted or not. Next. So once accepted, what's next? So there is, uh, there's a lot of paperwork in, in UP. Uh, so you will now process your university admission slip, which will formalize and make official your admission to the university. So next. Okay. Um, there are uh, scholarships available. They're not much. Uh, it's not that substantial, but for some students, it's uh, these scholarships. Um, can go a long way. So we have the Angara Scholarship, which is applied, uh, which you can apply for uh, through the Asian Center. And um, these are the details in, on the screen. So, so, uh, so regular faculty are full-time uh, faculty and lecturers are part-time. Uh, instructors. So you can see here that um, reflecting also the multidisciplinary nature of the programs of the Asian Center, we also have faculty uh, that come, who come from different fields. Um, we have uh, faculty uh, in the, uh, who have economics, anthropology, history, sociology, international relations, political science uh, degrees. So we all come from different fields. And we also come from, um, we also got our, um, uh, our postgraduate degrees from, uh, from different uh, universities. Some of us graduated from uh, UP, uh, um, Xavier University, NUS, our National University of Singapore, Kyoto University, Waseda University, Yonsei University, Univers University of Tehran, Leiden University, City, of Univers City University of New York, and Columbia University. And, and if you look at the bottom of each frame, you will see the expertise or the fields of each um, faculty member. And as part of the internationalization move of uh, the entire UP system, we also have uh, Dr. Graham Zhao, who is based overseas um, in um, NUS. Uh, and uh, has joined our faculty as our um, visiting um, faculty uh, fellow. So here are our um, lecturers. And this is a formidable uh, list. So we have um, lecturers uh, who have um, 
expertise in the fields of international relations, human rights, um, public policy, public administration. Um, political science, uh, labor migration. Um, we also have uh, somebody um, who does uh, Chinese politics and foreign policy. Next, um, anthropology and women and gender studies, Southeast Asian studies, history and Asian studies, and, and that includes music. Museology, laboratory. Um, next. Okay, so that's the roster of faculty and uh, lecturers of the Asian Center. Um, now we go to uh, resources and facilities. Okay. So we envision the Asian Center as a research and policy hub for Asian studies and Philippine studies within the country and within the region. And thus we hold regular webinars and lectures and conferences and have invited um, local and international scholars who are known in their fields. So these are just some of our lectures and seminars in the past uh, Mm, three, three, uh, three or four years. And so you, you can also see the, uh, the scope and the breadth of the topics that uh, we, uh, we discuss in our lectures. And it covers also the regional specializations. Okay, next. So these are our international the international conferences that we have organized. The most recent of which is uh, the one uh, in the middle, uh, the bottom, Global Asia, Issues, Challenges, and Opportunities. And uh, some of the prominent scholars that we have invited include uh, Rina Marwa, who is, a, uh, who is someone who's, uh, whose expertise is in um, development studies, political economy in South Asia. Uh, and then you have uh, Jayati Ghosh, who um, is a wonderful scholar uh, on um, globalization. Uh, Caroline Howe is a South, Southeast Asianist. And you also have someone like uh, Farid Alapas, who's a um, who's well known in decolonial studies. Next. Oh, before we go to the next, um, the, can we go back to the, yeah. So here, let me point out that we, in the past uh, few years, we have also organized graduate students conferences uh, almost yearly, except that during the pandemic, uh, this, uh, uh, we were not able to hold uh, uh, in the past two years, but um, this is an opportunity for graduate students to present their um, their works, uh, works in progress, ongoing theses, and others. Next. In terms of institutional research, uh, so over the years, the, the Asian Center has taken on research projects and it's a it's an we call it institutional because it it's really a project of uh, the center itself so we in the past uh, uh, we had the emerging asian communities in contemporary field and then uh, more recently we had an institutional research on putting equitable development at the center of the asian century Basically, this research is about the political economy uh, of Asia. And uh, Asian Center faculty went to um, different countries in Asia, Thailand, um, Indonesia, Myanmar, China, India, um, to, to study uh, the different 
um, uh, facets of um, uh, political economy in the region. Okay, next. Next slide. Mm -hmm. So this is just uh, a short list of individual faculty research, what we have published mm, individually. So uh, you have international marriage and migration, uh, China and Chineseness since the Cultural Revolution. Um, and then you have uh, mm, Philippine Confluence, Iberian Chinese and Islamic currents, uh, Zamboanga siege. Next. Um, Indonesian migrant workers, Catholicism and everyday morality. Um, and this is about uh, something on iodine content of salt, this is on health. And uh, there's something about uh, nation building and uh, the history of Toyota. Um, next. Um, this is one on uh, corruption and regime change, uh, cosmology and the construction of space in uh, Samabaji rituals, um, pilgrims uh, in the Philippines and Iran and the Philippines. So these are just uh, some of the publications uh, uh, that we've, uh, that we have, some of the writings that we've published as individuals, faculty. Next. Um, so the Asian Center also has a cultural uh, program. Uh, we have a um, Asian Center Museum, uh, which started as a museum laboratory of the PICAS uh, years ago in the 1970s. And now the collection consists of about 1,300 ethnographic objects from Muslim Mindanao and the Cordillera. And the cultural program uh, organizes and maintains um, and exhibits uh, all this collection uh, throughout the year. And right now, there is an ongoing exhibit on uh, called Saling Kat. Uh, so, you, you, so this one, so it's Saling Kat. This is really an exhibit of Philippine basketry. And these are just some of our exhibits, workshops, and performances. So we have a Bulwaga ng Mga Bayani, uh, which is the most valuable collection uh, in, our, in, in the museum because it consists of several busts of our uh, you know, Mga Bayani. And uh, it was, uh, ano ba? It was sculpted by the national sculptor uh, Tolentino, Guillermo Tolentino. And so the Asian, the Asia concert uh, just started uh, last year. It was a success. Uh, and we had faculty also performing in the Asia concert. Yeah. So these are just some of our cultural activities. Next. So uh, the Asian Center Library was established in 1956. And what's, just, what's important to note here is that uh, the collection uh, follows the areas of uh, specialization of, uh, of the college. So we have collection, uh, a China collection. And for those who, who would like to be to have CSSP as their home unit, then they can take from any. Uh, they can choose anthropology, demography, geography, history, sociology, linguistics, philosophy, political science, psychology. So you have a major, but uh, you are also allowed to take cognate, cognate courses. That means uh, this is your, it's like your second major, but not, but you have the main major, which can be any of these things also, any of these disciplines, and you can have a cognate 
which can also be any of these disciplines. Next. Next slide. So, uh, in terms of navigating the, M, the PhD program, okay, this is the same. Uh, there is a tri college secretariat, and I also had that secretariat. Next. Um, so, in terms of the flow of the program or the process, so after the students have to take their coursework, um, after taking the core courses, they have to take the qualifying exam. Once they pass the qualifying exam, they can continue their coursework, and that means taking their major, cognate, and elective courses. Once this is completed, they can take their comprehensive exams. Next, after the comprehensive exams, then the student will now um, write and defend uh, their proposal, um, go on research and field work for their dissertation, write their dissertation, defend their dissertation, and then graduate. Those in the PhD program are given six to eight years to finish their degree. If they don't finish it within that time, they are given a maximum of five years extension. So why six to eight years? Um, those who graduate, who have an MA in Philippine studies um, can take, um, are given only six years. Uh, to finish their, uh, their uh, PhD. But those who did not have a related MA uh, are given eight years to finish the PhD. Next. So these are the core courses uh, for the PhD program. So there's perspectives in Philippine studies, theory in Philippine studies, and methods in Philippine studies. Next. So this is the, these are the requirements. Uh, applicants must have a master's degree, must submit a letter of application to the chair of the Philippine Studies Council, uh, personal data form, their transcript of records, again, recommendation letters or forms, and a two-page uh, dissertation proposal. And uh, next, once accepted, uh, this will be available to you. But there is a process for the application. Um, yes, the okay, next. Um, the CHED also um, offers scholarships um, to PhD students. And we have um, a few uh, PhD students who have applied. And I suggest that uh, you explore also the CHED uh, website for information on uh, their scholarships. Next. So these uh, the the Chad scholarship I think is much is uh, is really substantial, and uh, it would be good again to uh, to explore uh, there uh, and ask for information from Chad. So here this is uh, if if you are a teacher in a state college state university, yeah, you can access these funds and they're, um, they're a significant amount. No, this is dissertation allowance. You can get as much as 120,000. Okay, next. So these are some tri-college activities. Um, we had a, uh, 
we recently had a conference on Pakaratian, and this is in collaboration with Women Weavers in Marawi and also the Mindanao State University. Uh, we also have a series of um, uh, you know, discussions uh, we call Pakighinabi. This means uh, for, for those who speak Visayan, uh, this means Usap. And uh, for this, um, for the Pakighinabi, we feature uh, um, dissertations from our graduates. So it's an opportunity for graduates to present their research. So this is a revolution with at tobacco. This was uh, just uh, last year. Okay. So do we have another slide? Okay. So I think that's uh, that's it uh, for this segment. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Natividad, for that very informative um, presentation. And I'm, I hope that our participants, um, our attendees right now, learned something from our um, short presentation about our programs. And sana naingganyo tayo na mag-apply now that you know what are the requirements, what, um, what, will you, what are you going to experience when you... Uh, enter and when you get accepted to our master's programs. I hope you're not scared. I hope you are excited. <laughs> okay. So now, um, at this point, before we proceed to the question and answer, because I'm sure we have a lot of questions, so please save your questions first. Um, at this point, we have invited um, alumni and current students of the UP Asian Center and the Tri-College PhD Philippine Studies to share with us their experiences in their studies and how it helped their current careers. Um, so let me first call on um, our alumni. Um, she graduated... Um, she graduated last year, 2022, with a degree in the mass with a master's degree in Asian studies, um, uh, specializing in China. She is also currently a science research specialist at the Philippine Council for Agriculture and Aquatic Resources Research and Development of the Department of. Uh, Science and Technology, or the DOST Picard. So let us welcome um, our alumna, uh, Ms. Katrina K. Principe. Thank you, Ms. Denny. Hi, so good afternoon. I am Katrina K. S. Principe, a Senior Science Research Specialist at the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic, and Natural Resources Research and Development, or PICARD. It is one of the sectoral planning councils of the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST. So I am a proud alumna of the UP Asian Center, class of uh, 2022, with a Master in Asian Studies degree with a focus on Northeast Asia, China. Um, firstly, I would like to thank the Asian Center for inviting me to share my experience as a graduate student uh, with all of you, our participants today. I commend you for being proactive in searching for the right graduate degree that fits your interests and personal or professional aspirations. So these types of information sessions hopefully will help you decide on what you want to pursue. Um, hopefully, at the end of the session, you choose the Asian Center. So um, a brief background, uh, my undergraduate degree is um, development communication from UPLB. The nature of our work at my division is on strategic planning and research generation that includes partnerships with local and international institutions. So when I was scouting for graduate degree programs and applying for scholarships, I had two primary objectives. First, um, that is to study in a field that I am interested in. And second, to align myself to the organizational competency needs as part of our human resources development program. So at that time in 2019, DOST has already institutionalized its Office of the Assistant Secretary for International Cooperation. Hence, we have or we have been very active 
um, we have very active bilateral and multilateral partnerships and engagements. So I saw that as an opportunity to contribute to to my organization, the USTP Card. Um, unfortunately, the DOST Human Resources Development Scholarship Program has very few priority fields in the social sciences. Um, um, understandably, it leans towards you know STEM courses, but uh, thankfully, I was able to justify how the degree would complement and be very useful to the OST, citing how international partnerships have been crucial in today's time as we address various issues and challenges. And more importantly, how area or Asian studies can help strengthen our collaboration with others. So I started basically as a you know blank canvas during my first semester. I struggled to catch up with my classmates who have undergraduate degrees in Asian studies or international relations or studies. Um, and they are quite confident of the history, issues, and personalities of the region. So I struggled to find my niche at the Asian Center initially. Um, but this is the part where I get to share how through time, I grew confident to bring my experiences and analysis using the Asian Studies lens through the degree program offered by AC. So among the things that enriched my experience is first the program itself. Of course, in UP, these courses are expected to be well thought of out and deliberated upon before approval and implementation, but you have a variety to choose from. There is also flexibility in selecting the courses that interest you and more most importantly help you build upon your research or focus so at the asian center ac we have distinguished and notable professors um, that not only share their expertise but also their network and connections uh, for example they invite you to symposia or conferences that help you build your network and learn from those that are truly Im 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 immersed in the field of area studies. So professors are also generous during class discussions, most especially, and I appreciate this the most, with their comments on and feedback on your research paper. And that is a privilege when you study in UP. So they will encourage you to publish or attend various conferences to present your paper. You are expected to write many, a lot of research papers in class, and AC professors would encourage you to present and submit those for publication. So I can speak for other graduate schools or colleges, but at AC, I got the impression that our professors need to instill that discipline and skill, whether in writing or speaking or in critical thinking um, uh, within our, with our research papers. Courses are also taught with well-curated set of readings and class activities. You have, for example, roundtable discussions, mini lectures, um, sort of professionalizing how we learn at graduate school. <clears throat> so um, during my time, we were the pandemic batch. Uh, we transitioned to first blended and then full online classes. Uh, we are grateful that we have a very supportive AC administration. You have the Office of the College Secretary and the library that were very attentive to our needs and always responsive to queries. Um, also, um, if you have time, please check out the Students' Corner on the AC website, which is a very good mm -hmm. reference for AC students and uh, you know uh, future AC students. So how has AC helped me professionally? Aside from the confidence from added knowledge and insights of Asia or the region, I can provide significant inputs and evaluation to our partnerships as part of the decision-making process of the DOSTP card management. And that is part of my role and responsibility in the agency. As a DOST Human Resources Development Program Scholar, I can advocate for support and inclusion of the field of area and Asian studies in the priority courses for science and technology development under DOST. <clears throat> and lastly, the experience of publishing uh, a peer-reviewed research during my time at AC um, that is under the mentorship of Professor Tino Clemente and another paper that was submitted at the third Japanese research um, studies research competition that is organized by AC and the Japan Foundation Manila through Dr. Celero. Um, it expanded my network and provided the opportunities to engage with other scholars. I was able to present my paper to a wider audience who surprisingly found them interesting and inspiring. You have international students to 
overseas Filipino workers and other scholars emailing you, you know, uh, sharing their thoughts and opinions on your research paper. So basically, that sums up my experience at AC, and I hope you consider the Asian Center as part of your learning journey. So thank you. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Miss Principe. So I I I can attest to the publications. Talagang tutulungan tayo ng ating mga uh, professors to publish our work. So that kasi totoo naman na the master's degree or the graduate programs are a uh, training ground for future scholars. So sa masters palang we are trained to write papers and to publish it to academic journals, to present it to a lot of conference, national or international conference, even um join competitions, research competitions. The Asian Center has um, annual com uh, research competitions in Japan studies. So if you are interested, you can also um, submit your papers there. Okay. So now let us proceed to our uh, next um, uh, testimonial. Uh, we have invited um, current students of the UP Asian Center. So our first... Um, student who will deliver their testimonials is a graduate of Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in social studies from the Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Marikina. Um, he is currently an Araling Panglipunan teacher uh, in the junior high school level at the Barangka National High School. He is currently taking Master of Arts in Philippine Studies, specializing in um, development studies. So let us welcome uh, Mr. Junisi Estanislao, a current student of MAPS or Philippine Studies Program. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Asian Center. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So... Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Luis Natividad for inviting me in the Asian Center. So, um, a brief background lang. So, I, at was mentioned a while ago by Ms. Pantano no, that I was uh, an undergrad, uh, undergraduate uh, earner of Bachelor of Secondary Education. So, basically, my, my field, uh, my undergraduate field is not related to the Philippine Studies and Asian Studies because... I'm I'm an educator in basic education, and then uh, it was when uh, actually I I attended um a conference way back in 2018. It was a Taiwan conference in Asian Center, if I am not mistaken. It's an international uh conference, and then it was a it was a whole day event, and then I. Uh, I was quickly uh, after after attending that in event. I was quickly uh, quickly um uh, got interested or enticed by by how graduate school work and how it trains uh future scholars no for scholarly work and um for for the academy. So that's why for two years since twenty eighteen up to twenty twenty, I was uh, always visiting the Asian Center website especially the student corner uh, tab uh, in order for me to to decide mm -hmm. what major or what specialization would like uh, I would like to take in or interest have an interest in so I decided to take MA in studies major in development because uh, um, it can uh, well for practical reasons, it can really it can be related to my to my profession. So I'm an educator in studying policies in education. So I tried to check for other programs, and um, after two years of deciding, so or two years of thinking, so na isip ko Asian Center na kasi tinig ng kore yung mga courses na available or ino offer ah uh, pasok na pasok siya sa mga gusto kong kune na mga courses so 2020 uh, actually pandemic ako nag start mag MA so yun uh, ECQ pa kung hindi ako nakakamali enhanced community quarantine pa yon na nag apply ako sa program 
connected. Tuloy-tuloy lang siya, uh, yung classes ko. Um, uh, buti na lang din, napapagsabay, kasi meron din full-time work as a teacher. During that time, I was still a private school teacher, and then I shifted to public school education. So, I'm in debt and right now. And uh, now, uh, with regards to my... Um, uh, training so i got very intimidated at first no during my first semester because zero knowledge talaga ako before tapos uh, i need to catch up with the readings with the concepts with the theories pero nakayanan naman um dahil din sa support ng mga nahanap ko mga kaibigan during grad school uh, coursework days na hanggang ngayon ay kaibigan ko pa din at ko ko connect uh, ko pa din sa program and Bukod din doon ay yung pagtuturo, yung, yung pagtutok ng mga instructor and professors namin with regards to our uh, needs and kung ano yung mga kailangan namin gawin. Uh, and I appreciate ko rin uh, when it comes to Asian centers, the, the caliber of research na pinapagawa talaga and yung, yung binibigay sa amin na hindi siya basta-basta research lang. Mataas yung level ng scholarship. Uh, makikita rin naman natin when you visit the Asian Center website yung yung kal- kalibre ng mga faculty na kasapi sa Asian Center. At lalo na kapag naka-attend kayo ng classes sa mga courses na experience, um, malaking bagay yung affiliation ko sa Asian Center because uh, because of the Asian Center, I was able to write opinion pieces already regarding educational policies and I was able to publish two Scopus Index journal articles, uh, in, uh, one in gerontology and one in, if I'm not mistaken, that's SAGE. So uh, it's very helpful because the, the level of scholarship that I have sa aming mga sujante ay hindi matatawaran at bukod doon yung how your perspectives in study in the Philippines regardless of your track or your specialization will help you to further determine or discern your your research interest so sa akin the development studies ako um dati education lang yung lagi ko tinitingnan ngayon Marami na rin akong pwedeng tingnan ng mga lenses no na interdisciplinary inter- interdisciplinary din like social movements um social protection policies among others and aside doon um yun nga um malaking bagay yung pagkakaroon ng connection because that time uh, I was a graduate of local university hindi ako nanggaling ako sa hindi kilala ng universidad no undergrad ako then I I, I attended the Asian Center out of determination lang, lakas ng loob. So, ngayon, uh, uh, I just passed the comprehensive exam and then I will be proposing my thesis na next semester. Uh, I will be starting to propose my uh, thesis, thesis or MA thesis next semester. So, yun lang, ang mapapayo ko lang for, for future students as uh, for the applicants as lalo na sa MA, I uh, don't be afraid or get, uh, get intimidated uh, kung para sa inyo talaga or sa tingin nyo, interest nyo talaga yung pinukuhan ninyo. Uh, magtatagal talaga kayo sa program dahil kung doon, doon malalabas yung determination nyo to finish something or to gain something. Uh, especially when when you're in Asian Center, uh, magiging alaga talaga kayo na, na hindi lang basta makagraduate ka or mabigyan kayo na degree. But for you to be able to to become refined scholars in your field and to become catalyst of change in the Philippines and in Asia as well. So that's all. Po. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Stanislav, and congratulations on passing your comprehensive exam. Um, uh, thesis ka na. Um, good luck. <laughs> Ayan. Sana wag kang tumigil hanggat kaya. <laughs> Usually kasi mga students, um, pagdating na na thesis, 
Nagsa-stop na sila, tapos shift na lang tayo sa notices. <laughs> Sana hindi ka mag-give up sa thesis mo. Um, and also, I encourage everyone na mag-thesis tayo. <laughs> thesis program. Okay. So, thank you very much, Mr. Stanislaw, for um, your inspiring remarks. And now, let's proceed to our next student. Okay? So, we have a student from the Master of Asian Studies uh, program. So she's currently a foreign affairs research specialist at the Asia Pacific Studies Section, Center for International and Strategic Studies at the Foreign Service Institute. So again, she she's taking up Masters in Asian Studies program. Um, let us all welcome uh, Ms. Alisa Alberto. Thank you, Ms. Pantana. Good afternoon. Um, as per um, her introduction earlier, I am Ali, and when I'm not a student, I'm a government employee of the Foreign Service Institute, the research and training arm of the Department of Foreign Affairs. So let me start off by expressing my gratitude to the Center for inviting me to be one of today's sharers. So thank you, Dean Sevilla and Dr. Natividad for the invitation. I hope this helps prospective students decide on the program that they want to take at the Asian Center. So for context, I started my career in the government ever since I graduated from Dateneo de Manila University. At that time, I worked, I applied and I worked for the House of Representatives. Uh, graduate school was not yet in the picture as I thought that I wanted to focus more on my legislative work. But in the hustle and bustle of domestic politics, I found myself largely frustrated, um, maybe even jaded with the current state of our democracy of our domestic politics. So at that time, admittedly, I was just looking for an avenue to engage in conversations and discussions that was in the realm of international studies and area studies. This is this context that I decided for, to apply for a program in the prestigious Asian Center. At that time, it was my one and only choice. So I got in and honestly, the first few months were intimidating as I felt like, you know, even if I graduated with a degree in um, diplomacy and international relations, I felt like I still did not have enough research training and I felt like I wasn't, you know, well read enough. But all hesitations aside, it was in the kindness of my professors and in the support of my course mates that I am adapting to the demands of, my, of the program. So, hindi rin naman ako perfectong estudyante. Malilate ako sa klase dahil magkocommute mula sa Pasay or malilate mag-login sa Zoom kasi hindi ako maalis sa meeting. But, you know, these are not excuses. These should not be excuses. These are reminders that as working students, we have to try. This will be a reality and that we have to consciously and continuously exert, exert more effort in the schoolwork that we submit. Um, in Bisaya, kinahanglan maning kamot. The Asian Center will encourage you to try, and if you fail, you have to try again. So the training in Asian Center also taught me to balance my time and use it wisely. So it taught me to read, um, highlight, comprehend, and synthesize well in a moving vehicle. Minsan sa loob ng aeroplano, nagbabasa ako, nag-highlight ako sa grab, sa LRT, sa tricycle. Kailangan magbasa at umunawa to be able to contribute to class discussions effectively. Siyempre, no one forced me to be in this program. Tapos no one else is also paying for my tuition but myself. So sabi ko, I should learn as much as I can from esteemed pr professors sa center. And kailangan ko sulitin yung oras ko sa Asian Center. But more than the values of never being afraid to try and learning to balance my time, this in the Asian Center where I found myself wanting to contribute more to today's conversations. So that thing ginagawa ko na research was very surface level, explanatory notes sa isang house bill or house resolution. Tapos ang isinusulat ko dati, speeches lang or manifestations during plenary sessions. But I thought that doors, windows, and even gates open for me because I'm a student of the Asian Center. So because of the Asian Center, I found myself in the Foreign Service Institute where I'm able to research and write on issues that are more than what the people and the voting public would want to hear. So the theories I've had, had to painstakingly read and internalize from 201, 210, PS264, these are what guides me in doing my work that analyzes issues and problems with foreign policy implications, global and regional strategies, and management of foreign affairs while serving as an institutional consultant of the Department of Foreign Affairs. So it is an AC that I learned to be a foreign affairs researcher na 
who puts a prime on intersectionality. So that's race, gender, and using analyzing issues using a multidisciplinary lens. So my history, my culture, my sociological, anthropological lens, and tinitignan, and the state of our country's affairs beyond the usual economic and political analysis na nilalapat natin sa mga issue ng bayan. So truly, the Asian Center gave me the confidence that I needed in promoting our national interest and identity in the work that I do. AC behooves me to be an area specialist that thinks, that acts, na nag-iisip at kumikilos. So these are important for me. These are important values as a researcher and as a young woman in the government. So as you contemplate your future in AC, I implore you to answer these two questions. Where can I best think and act for the service of the Filipino? And where can I learn theory and encourage praxis? For me, ang sagot ko dito, Asian Center. It's my one and only choice, my one and only answer to these two questions. And hopefully, makikita-kita tayo doon. Damo nga salamat. Thank you. Very well said, Miss Ali. Thank you very much. Nakakataba naman ang puso para sa Asian Center. And natutuwa kami dahil nakakapag-produce kami ng mga estudyante tulad nyo na para uh, na nagseserbisyo para sa bayan. Syempre pa, tayong mga Pilipino, lagi naman tayong service to the Filipino people, 'di ba? Laging para sa bayan. Ang pag-aaral natin para sa bayan para masolusyunan ang mga problema sa lipunan, um, makatulong sa paggawa ng scholarship, ng knowledge para sa ikabubuti ng buong Pilipinas. Ayan, thank you very much Miss Alberto. Um And now, para naman sa mga interested sa PhD, um, walang audio. Uh, para naman sa mga interested sa uh, Tri-College PhD, also invited um, a current student of the Tri-College program. So she is currently a faculty member of the Department of Community Development sa College of Social Work and Community Development ng University of the Philippines, Diliman. Um, she is currently taking up the PhD Philippine Studies Program specializing in development studies. So let us all welcome si, si, um, Professor Jeneline Reyes. Hello, good afternoon sa lahat and happy to see that we have so many um, interested potential students na nag-attend um, this afternoon. No? So hopefully, we get to see you sa Asian Center if you um, so decided na magtuloy um, coming uh, first sem next uh, academic year. So as a background, no, um, I finished uh, my degree in sociology and urban and regional planning Um, from UP Diliman. And um, I joined the Tri-College Philippine Studies Program noong 2020. And it was really the height of uh, the pandemic, so lockdown. And what I appreciated about the AC, of course, starting from yung mga questions ko about the applications, yung mga questions ko about the program, despite yung challenges natin noong panahon na yun, it was... Um, answered efficiently. So the decision really para sa akin ay sige, I'll um, proceed with the program. And hindi naman ako um, nagkaroon ng pagsisisi, no? Talagang kagaya nga nung na-mention nung mga nag-share kanina, parang yung expectation nila, malulula ka sa readings, malulula ka with all the theorizing, especially um, I'm um, completing my program sa PhD. Pero very important yung support system ng mga professors, ng program advisors, and also yung mga kaklase na magiging um, kabahagi ng ating pag-aaral um, under um, the program. Um, before I joined the uh, PhD uh, Tri-College Philippine Studies Program, I am involved or I was involved sa mga policy research. Um, and I think nakatulong talaga yung pag-sharpen sa program ng mga analytical, yung paggamit sa mga analytical tools, yung mga research uh, methods na matututunan natin from our class to expand yung ating horizon, yung pag-expand ng ating perspective sa so, pag-problematize, at least for me, no, sa um, ang specialization ko kasi na, na napili ay development study. So very helpful yon And um, na-mention din kanina na I'm already part of um, the faculty ng CSWCD. And 
initially hindi siya part ng aking professional plan pero I always say this na I give credit to being part of the Chai College programs pag open ng um, opportunity and also yung interest na na inculcate sa at akin be um as a student no nung programa dun sa pagmamahal or dun sa um yung sa pag-appreciate ng rigors ng academe kaya ako napunta sa um sa academic um institution ngayon and very true yung binahagi kanina ng ating uh, mga naunang kaklase na talagang with the program with yung mga perspective na binabahagi ng ating mga professor napaka-inspiring napaka-enriching ng mga experiences nila and siguro bato na lang yung hindi tatablan no ng pagmumulat sa atin um, towards pagsisilbi sa bayan being for being an instrument of change no at ito yung mga parang hindi natin makikita explicitly sa programa pero ito yung naka-embody dun sa program ng Philippine Studies program. So hopefully marami tayong mga students na ma-encourage at hindi ma-discourage dun sa mga subjects na ipinakita kanina but we are really um excited to have as many students joining our program sa AC. Ayun. Salamat po. Thank you very much Professor Reyes. Um, ayan, tulad nga ng sabi ni Prof. Reyes, sana ay maging excited tayo sa mga programs at hindi tayo matakot sa mga nakita natin mga subjects. Sa number of units, for example, sa PhD 48 units, sana hindi tayo matakot. It's just a number. Okay. And at this point, we have one last testimonial. Uh, I would like to introduce one of the prominent um uh alumni alumna of the UP Asian Center um she is a Filipino host journalist and professor she is currently uh the chairperson of the department of journalism of the College of Mass Communications University of the Philippines Diliman uh, she took up a uh, masters a uh, master of arts in Philippine studies in 2017 so Actually, um, she's not with us today, pero um, nag-send siya ng video. So, let us welcome Miss Professor Cara David. Okay. Oh, and yes, siya po ay um, alumna ng Asian Center. Ayan. So, let us um, listen to the, listen and watch her video. Hi, ako si Cara David. Nagtapos ng MA Philippine Studies noong 2017 mula sa Asian Center. Medyo mahaba yung naging journey ko bago ako nagtapos ng aking uh, master's degree. Umabot ako ng almost 10 years kasi pinagsasabay ko yung trabaho ko bilang isang mamamahayag at yung pag-aaral. So, minsan talagang ano kaunti lang yung nakukuha kong courses kasi nga sobrang busy sa trabaho. Pero very generous naman yung mga teachers tapos um, nare-realize din naman kasi nila na na sobrang busy talaga nung trabaho ko as a journalist. But anyway, noong 2017, nagtapos na nga ako natapos ko rin finally yung aking thesis. Um, maraming nagtatanong sa akin bakit hindi ako kumuha ng MA in Journalism or MA in Communication since I'm a journalist. Um, talagang pinili ko ang MA Philippine Studies kasi gusto kong magkaroon pa ng dagdag na kaalaman tungkol sa ating lipunan. Sa palagay ko, magagamit ko yung, yung mga kaalaman na makukuha ko from other disciplines or other social sciences para mas mapalalim pa yung trabaho ko bilang isang journalist at hindi naman po ako nabigo kasi yung programa na MA Philippine Studies talagang malawak siya eh. marami ka talagang mapupulot na iba't ibang mga, mga kaalaman mula sa history, sa sociology sa anthropology lahat iba iba't, iba't ibang mga, mga disiplina makukuha mo dito siguro ang ma-advise ko lang Dapat pag pumasok po kayo sa MA Philippine Studies, kahit na malawak na yung kaalaman ninyo sa Pilipinas, kailangan malinaw sa'yo 
kung ano yung focus mo, kung ano yung gusto mong pag-aralan talaga, anong aspekto ng ating lipunan bilang isang bansa, yung ating lipunan na Pilipinas, ano yung aspekto nito, yung gusto mo talagang pagtuunan ng pansin para mas maging well-rounded tapos la, yung yung learning mo tapos at least yung lahat ng kukunin mo ng kurso ay nakatuon doon para kumbaga hindi sabog yung kaalaman kasi mau-overwhelm ka eh. ang dami kasing iba't ibang subjects at ang daming iba't ibang pwedeng pag-aralan tungkol sa Pilipinas so ako noon nung bagong-bago pa lang ako sa sa MA program na Asian Center Um, yung una kong naging professor, si Professor Mario Miklat, the late Mario Miklat, sinabi na niya kaagad sa akin na, ano ba talaga iha ang gusto mong i-focus? So, mula first year ko, nilagay ko na sa isip ko na ang gusto kong pag-aralan ay ang karapatang pantao ng mga indigenous peoples, specifically the I. So, um, at this point, we'll proceed to the question and answer I already saw at the, in the Q&A Q &A box na ang dami na nating tanong. So, please, wag po tayong uh, mahiyang magtanong. Um, keep your questions coming and we'll read some of them. Um, by the way, I would like to thank first um, our all our um, alumna and current students for sharing their experience with us and for being with us this afternoon. Thank you very much, um, Junisi, Katrina, Ali, uh, Miss Jenny, um, and Professor David. Thank you very much for giving your time um, for the UP Asian Center. Ayan. Um, so now let us read some questions. We actually received questions sa email. So just read some of it. Uh, ito, this is a, um, an important question nowadays because of the new normal. So we have here Dr. Natividad, our uh, college secretary, and the staff, uh, Kuya Bobby and Kuya Abel, to answer your question. So please, wag po tayong mag mahiya. Ito yung um, platform para masagot na yung mga questions natin. There are no stupid questions. So just keep it coming, keep it coming. If... um. If you want, you can also raise your hand if you want to um, say your questions instead of typing them. And if you don't want to interact, gusto, kung gusto, mas gusto nyong mag-type, okay lang din. So just use our Q&A box. So first question is, what is the method of delivery once accepted into the program? Do we do face-to-face -face only? Do we do hybrid online with uh, periodic on-site sessions? Or is it uh, is online available na, kumbaga full online. So, let us hear from our college secretary, Dr. Natividad. Ito yung common question, ano? Ito yung uh, concern nating uh, lahat. Uh, ang UP kasi sa ngayon, ang buong UP system, ang policy ay hybrid. Anong ibig sabihin ng hybrid? Ito ay combination ng online at saka uh, on-site uh, classes. Pero it is up to the college or unit to determine how many online classes and how many um, on-site classes uh, they will be conducting. So, depende yon sa pangangailangan ng, uh, ng kolehiyo at depende yon sa programa. Um, mayroong, uh, in terms of graduate programs, uh, mayroong mga kolehiyo na full ano na sila, full face-to-face. Ang Asian Center this semester uh, decided uh, to do a combination. Mas maraming online, pero sinisimulan na yung face-to-face. Um, -face. Um, so ibig sabihin nun, in concrete terms, ay meron kaming minimum, minimum of three um, on-site classes or in-person classes. Minim, minimum of three, ha? and then the rest ay, ano, ay uh, Zoom. Um, so, depende sa faculty na nagtuturo ng, ng kurso kung uh, papaano yung kombinasyon. Uh, pero, kailangan coordinated. So, ang ginawa ay first part of the semester pwedeng mag-face-to-face -face, at saka yung last part ng semester pwedeng face-to-face -face para yung mga nasa probinsya ay na-schedule nila yung kanilang pagpunta sa Maynila at hindi yung parang... Uh, uh, Walang, ano, walang schedule, kumbaga. So, coordinated lahat ng faculty. 
uh, sa pag-schedule ng um, face-to-face classes. At malamang, ganun din next semester. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Natividad. So, we have another question here. Um, pagdating naman daw po sa, um, sa paggawa ng essays, especially in the non-thesis track, um, um, meron daw po bang format that needs to be followed? Or what tips can you give when constructing the essay for, for admissions as part of the requirements? Um, yung um, pagsusulat ng essay, uh, importante yon kasi dito tinitignan ng uh, panel um, una kung papaano kayo nakakabuo ng isang argumento uh, at ano ang magiging basihan ng inyong argumento uh, at kung gano'ng kayo uh, kakuhirin sa inyong pagsusulat. Uh, so general lamang ito. So ang importante ay uh, matukoy ninyo. Uh, you identify a topic or an issue that you want uh, to discuss. And then um, determine uh, your arguments. And your arguments should be based on evidence. So titignan yun sa, uh, sa inyong uh, pagsusulat. Hindi lang basta opinion, pero it's an educated opinion based on um, what you've read uh, and what you've studied. Uh, hindi kailangang mahabang-mahaba. So siguro at most, uh, you can submit a five-page uh, essay. Um, so yun ang aking um, Uh, masasabi doon. Pero huwag kayong magpa-intimidate ha? kasi uh, basta isulat kasi meron pa naman kayong panahon na magsulat at mag-revise. Wala namang nagsasulat. Wala naman kahit mga faculty. Wala naman yung kung ano yung first draft. Yun na yun. So just polish it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you very much po. Um... For the PhD in Philippine Studies, for example, um, is it possible to cross-enroll elective courses? So, for example, there are courses in other UP campuses that you are interested to take. Can we take that during while taking the PhD in Philippine Studies? Yes, so pwede. Kasi ang, ang definition naman ng elective ay any course that you want to take. at uh, inaallow yon na uh, so so in in um in short it's a free elective it can be anything uh, pero syempre dahil kailangan ang ang input ng advisor kailangan din ninyong pag-usapan kung ano talaga yung makakatulong na elective para sa programang tinitake o sa research na pinaplano uh, so in short pwede kahit sa ibang campus Uh, ng UP. Okay po. Ayan, pwede pala mag, mag-enroll sa ibang campuses. Okay. Uh, for elective lang yan ha. For the elective lang yan ha. For oh, electives. For, for electives. Pero for yung core courses and specialization, they have to be taken here. Here at the UP Asian Center. Okay. So, how about um ad- during admissions po, we are required to uh, submit a research plan. Um, what if magbago yung, during, while taking the course, magbago yung isip ko at hindi ko i-follow yun? Okay lang po ba yun? Or kailangan, kung ano yung pinasa mong research plan sa simula, yun pa din? Um, maraming namang, ano, uh, sa, sa, uh, sa course of, uh, in the course of uh, doing your program, um, hindi naman, uh, it's not unexpected that uh, circumstances change, interests change. So, okay lang na magbago uh, yung pinasa ninyong um, research plan. Okay. Ayan, just to be clear, kasi marami akong nakitang questions here na yun yung tanong. Okay lang na hindi yun 
kung ano yung pinasa nyo na research plan, okay lang na during the course of your studies ay magbago yun, yung research plan nyo. So, you can uh, do another topic. Pero, I would just like to reiterate yung mga shinner like ni, ng ating mga students and alumni kanina na um, mas maganda na meron na kayong topic in mind tapos lahat ng gagawin yung papers, kunyari sa mga courses nyo, nakat, nakatuon yung focus doon. Kasi makakatulong yon para um, uh, para sa thesis nyo kung thesis track man kayo. Mm-mm. Kasi at least nakapagbasa na kayo, alam nyo na yung material, tapos sa dulo, eh di makakapag-focus na talaga kayo doon sa, um, sa topic na gagawin nyo. Okay, so other questions we have here. Um, what is the uh, usual schedule of MA classes? Do, do we take this during the day or during the night on Saturdays? Nisip ko si Bobby sa sumagot eh. Bobby? Sir Bobby! Nandyan pa ba si Bobby? Sir Bobby, nandito ka ba? Pakigalaw ang baso. <laughs> Ayan. Go, Sir Bobby. Hello, what, ma'am? Nakali. Medyo, medyo malabo yung dating na po sa akin. Ah, sige po. Um, ano daw po yung usual schedule ng MA classes and PhD classes? Um, during the day ba ito? Afternoon? Evening? Saturday? Sunday? Ano po usually yung schedule? Na yung usual na schedule... Uh... Five in the afternoon hanggang eight. So, three hours per ano, per class. Though, meron mga teachers or faculty na, na nag schedule ng class nila one to four or four to seven. You know, so, depende. Pero hindi naman lagi nangyayari yun. Uh, most of the time, yung regular schedule, which is five to eight na classes after office hours, yun. Uh, okay. Same din siguro yun sa, ano, sa, sa PhD classes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Sir Bobby. So, ayan. So, so Dali, since... Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Oo. Yung uh, para lang kasi sa mga working students, importante yung Saturday classes. Eh. So, buong araw ng Saturday ay nag-hold ng classes ang mga faculty. So, it starts from mga 8.30 or 9.00. And then natatapos yan mga 7 p.m. So meron lang mga periods. Um, parang 8.30 to 11.30, 1 to 4, 4 to 7. Um, okay po. So usually kasi uh, 3 hours per class tayo. No? So kaya ganun ka tagal. 8.30 to 11.30 or 9 to 12. And then 1 to 4, 4 to 7. So since most of our students are actually working students um mostly evenings and saturday talaga yung class ng ng, ng masters and phd okay so do we have other question um to clarify should the requirements be submitted in person or online uh sir bobby kaya Si Abel. Ako na lang po. Okay, sige. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Abel. No. Sa, uh, sa submissions po ng ating mga requirements for admission, pwede naman po tumatanggap po tayo ng mga online submissions. Make sure lang po na masunod nila yung file naming at saka yung numbering para makita po natin yung mga kailangan pa nila at yung mga necessary documents kung may pending. Pero mas inaano po natin, mas in-encourage na magpasa po ng hard copy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Sir Abel. Um, ayan, since medyo bumabalik na tayo sa face-to-face um, transactions, um, we appreciate, or the Office of the College Secretary um, appreciates if magpasasamit tayo ng um, applications online. Ay, uh, sorry, uh, face-to-face. Submission ay hard copy. Pero kung hindi talaga makakapunta, okay lang then they can submit online. Okay? Ito, I think this is an important question. What is the difference between the thesis and non-thesis tracks? Um, in terms of benefits and the degree that will be obtained, ano daw po kaya yung pagkakaiba? 
Okay, sige. Oo, um, maganda yung tanong. Ano. Um, usually kasi ang mga kumukuha ng thesis track ay yung interesado sa research or they see uh, a career in the academe. And so sa academe, you really need to uh, have research skills. Um, pero, um, or yung trabaho ninyo ay nangangailangan ng research skills, then we encourage you to go uh, to take the re- research, ano, the thesis track. Ngayon, yung iba naman, uh, naiisip nila na um, hindi, ka na, hindi naman nila kailangan na gumawa ng uh, fieldwork, pero ang mas kailangan nila ay exposure sa iba't ibang mga discourses through their uh, yung subjects. Um, so, doon naman nila uh, mas pinipili nila yung non-thesis. Uh, pero it's not to say na yung mga non-thesis track students cannot go on to ano, take a PhD kasi um, meron din tayo mga estudyante na non-thesis who ended up taking a PhD uh, later. So, so merong mga ganun. Walang ano, walang cut and dry na separation. Um, pero um, if you want to go into knowledge production, then go the thesis track. Okay, thank you very much Dr. Nat- Natividad. So, Uh, we have a question here. Apart from the master's programs, do we have short courses, certificate programs, or short diploma programs? Mm-hmm. Sa ngayon ay wala pa tayong mga short uh, courses or programs. Pero ito ay ano, uh, nababanggit na rin sa ilang mga meetings ng faculty. But it will take uh, ano, some planning. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, um, we have a question here. What is the primary language used to deliver course lectures? Mm, it depends on the faculty. Uh, mayroong mga faculty na mas comfortable na magi English. Mayroong mga faculty na mas comfortable sa Filipino or nag code switch. Um, ang Meron bang concern doon sa language? I wonder uh, uh, bakit uh, kasi yung tanong na yun. Um, opo, kasi I think merong mga international students um, asking if English ba, oh. kaya ba katagalog oh. um, yung oh. delivery oh. ng lectures. Oh. 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 Since this, is, ako kasi if you're, if you're doing Philippine studies, especially, di ba? I encourage that uh, those who who are interested in that field uh, have some basic uh, Filipino uh, language para um, kasi ano, mas, uh, mas maraming makukuha kahit na English pa yung delivery ng, uh, ng faculty. Uh, in the same way that those of us who studied overseas We had to take an English exam, a, a language, an English language uh, exam, uh, to be able to enter the university overseas. Um, ano eh? Lalo na kung area studies, but it's uh, but uh, we have students who do not have Filipino language skills entering uh, the college, and it's fine. So nagagawa naman. Mm-mm. Uh, and and uh, faculty adjust also, uh, depending on the composition of the class. Ayan. So flexible mm-hmm. naman ang ating mm-hmm. <laughs> faculty. Ayan. Okay. So another question is, um, does the Asian Center provide a one-on-one guidance on planning for successful postgraduate admission and coursework? I'm raising this point in order for the student to effectively plan and successfully accomplish the postgraduate degree. Perhaps current students can be mobilized and paired with prospective students to help plan their admission. Ah. So your prospective applicants, um, 
Oo, parang body ah. sister. Oo, 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 oo. Tingin ko this is ano um siguro sa ibang ano sa ibang uh, universities kinagawa 'yon and that means mas meron silang uh, capacity to mobilize students and their students have uh, time and uh, can do it um pero it's it's a thought it's a thought kasi i'm sure our students uh, would also like to help um ang suggestion ko lang parang you can write to us and say uh, can 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 you um give us a name of one of your one or two of your students diba and uh, who can guide me then i uh, we'll do so uh, we can we can assist uh, pero sa ngayon wala kaming programa na naka-set up para doon so we respond according to the need siguro Mm-hmm. without ano without yung uh, parang raising expectations that our current students can do it but i'm sure meron meron makukuha din mm-hmm. okay po okay so uh, maraming questions here on recommendation form so i know that we have a lot of questions so maybe um since medyo limited yung time natin we can um stay online to answer um, via the Q&A box. But as for um, the questions that we're going to read out loud, we're going to limit it to maybe two to three more and then that's it. Because we, um, I think our professor, Dr. Nativel, still has class after this. Um, ayan. Okay, so just a few more questions. And then, pero keep your questions coming because uh, Kuya Bobby and Kuya Abel will be happy to answer your questions via the Q&A box. Okay, so maraming questions here on the recommendation forms. Um, mm-hmm. Sir Bobby and Sir Abel, how many do we require? Two or three? Or um, paano kapag hindi makontak yung mga professors? Ano kaya ang kailangan gawin? Uh, actually, madami nga nagtatanong. Ang requirements talaga natin is uh, at least at least two either po for, from your previous previous or current professor and and or dalawa po from previous or current supervisor or manager so kahit alin po basta kahit minimum po natin ay dalawa hindi naman po tayo strict lalo na po kung matagal nang hindi nag-aaral or medyo post graduate na po din siya at nagka-transfer na lang hindi naman tayo ganoon ka-strict sa recommendation as long as naka-sealed po ay papadala sa amin or mas maganda po ipadala po directly sa amin through email and we will acknowledge din po yun. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much Kuya Abel. Um pero Dani, pero question kung po pwede na ano na employer. Yes, pwede, pwede ano or colleague na ano na supervisor who know uh, who knows your work. Um kasi nung ako rin nag-apply for my uh, PhD halimbawa um, matagal ako uh, matagal na akong nakagraduate so hindi ko na ma, uh, makukuha na ng uh, recommendation yung mga professors ko um, sa mga colleagues ko uh, at supervisor ko sa trabaho yun ang nagbigay uh, sa akin ng recommendation niya okay po So ayan, pwede ang uh, former professors or employers para sa mga aking mga um interested maging working student. Ayan. Okay, maybe last question for this afternoon. Um um will the masters or will the ME programs be accessible to OFWs outside the Philippines or just the students residing in the Philippines? Oo. Alam mo, maganda yung tanong ngayon kasi syempre ang dami nating OFWs. Ano? Um, siguro, um, uh, unfortunately, wala tayong full, fully online na mga classes ngayon at combination ng online at saka on-site. Um, so, nakakapanghinayang <laughs> Uh, na ganun. Um, pero um, 
mag-submit lang kayo. Tingnan natin, baka sa pag-uusap ng faculty. Sa ngayon kasi, ano eh, very fluid yung uh, modality natin. At ano, there's a, an ongoing debate uh, about the modality that uh, is more effective in graduate programs. Kasi iba kapag undergraduate, iba kapag graduate. Lalo na kung marami tayong mga working students and ano, at iba pa na mga may mga ibang circumstances. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Natividad. And um, I'm sure um, sana ay nasagot namin yung some of your questions and I'm sure meron pang mga, mga may questions sa inyo. So, please keep them coming and we'll answer your questions. This is your chance to ask questions. Thank you very much to the Office of College Secretary, um, Dr. Natividad, our UP Asian Center College Secretary, to Kuya Abel and to, to Kuya Bobby for um, sharing with us uh, short information about um, our MA programs. And we hope that uh, this information were able to help you para makapag-pursue ng um, master's and or PhD studies here at the UP Asian Center and the Tri College. Um, and the Tri College. Ayan. So um, we'll stay for a few more minutes. So if you still have questions, you can type them in the Q&A box or, or in the chat box if you like. Um, and we'd like to remind you that admission is ongoing for the Masters in Philippine Studies, um, for the Masters in Asian Studies and Philippine Studies program and the Tri College PhD Philippine Studies program. So admissions are ongoing, po. And, um, the deadline is on, um, July 15, okay? As much as possible, July 15, 5 p.m. <laughs> okay? Kung pwedeng office hours, makapagpasa, try po natin, okay? July 15, so that's like a month away. So you still have time to draft your essays, your research plans. Ayan, and nagsabi na si uh, Dr. Natividad kanina ng mga tips on what um what to write on your... um on your essays. Um, ayan. So we hope that um, this information session was helpful. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, please like and subscribe on the UP Asian Center um, Facebook, YouTube channel. For those who are asking for um, the, the slides that we posted. So yes, we'll email you the slides. Um, ayusin lang po namin para hindi magulo. Um, correct, correct ng mga <laughs> typo. Ayan. Um, ayan. So for uh, questions, other questions about our programs, um, please email us. Kung hindi man namin masagot ngayon at meron pa kayong mga questions afterwards, email us at acsec.upd at up.edu.ph. Ayan. It's in on your screen. Okay, and if you have other questions and trip nyo ang magbasa-basa, please visit our website. You can also look at the admissions, admission requirements and processes using the link bit.ly slash AC admissions. Again, application is ongoing. Deadline is on July 15, 2023. I hope that you'll apply to our programs and and see you soon, UP Asian Center. Ayan. Thank you very much, Paul. <laughs>